All right, guys, today we're going to be doing an interesting video, definitely breaking from the, the norm of survival uh, knives. And today we're going to be talking about a semi-survival rifle. And today we're going to be going over my truck gun. And we're going to break down a little bit before we get into what this gun is, I'm kind of breaking down what I consider a truck gun. Now, another thing we also are going to talk about is what I consider a pack or hiking gun as well. So let's jump into this. And first, we're going to talk about my go-to hiking gun. So we're not going to spend too much time on this. I have more dedicated videos on this. Of course, this is my Smith & Wesson Model 20, 29. This is a Dash 3, and it is chambered in 44 Magnum, of course. This one, actually, I put in quite a few shorts, and people always think it's a uh, like a 327 or something, let's say a 357 Magnum. But this is a, a 29, just a bone stock, old school 29. And this is my hiking slash um, backpacking bear gun for the most part. Now, I do have a few other handguns that I do run in the rotation, but for the most part, this 44 mag is my go-to, and I like and respect the 44 Magnum. It's obviously no replacement for something like a 12-gauge shotgun or a full-on rifle, um, but it does a very good job and is honestly a pretty solid handgun for back the backwoods. And the primary reason why I have a gun that is a little bit more dedicated to um, like a truck gun as opposed to my hiking gun is that this is you know whenever you have different applications you have to make sacrifices right so when i'm backpacking um, and hiking and such i'm prioritizing weight and space over the highest effective stopping power right so i feel like the 44 magnum revolver has a decent stopping power it has a decent amount of kinetic energy in the bullets that it fires and so i feel like the trade-offs are at least okay for me. Like, like I said, obviously it'd be better to have something like a you know 12 gauge shotgun, but if you're going backpacking, it's not always the most realistic thing to have. Um, so this is a pretty good balance, I feel, for those types of situations where size and weight constraints require you to have a smaller firearm. Now, with that said, Let's talk about a truck gun. Now, what do I consider a truck gun? Something like a truck gun, and I've had multiple over the course of years, is something that I would feel is certainly better than having something like a handgun, and this is designed to be based out of a truck. So the types of use and applications for this, or like when I would have this in the truck, would be if I was going camping and doing like truck-based camping, essentially. And so in those types of situations, um, having something that's in the truck, you're not necessarily as confined to size and weight constraints. You know, so it's a lot larger, a lot longer, and even a lot heavier. Now, for me, I still personally prefer and we'll get into like this rifle specifically, but I still prefer having something that is handy. So once again, you know, you could hypothetically put something like a 50 BMG, you know, uh, M82 uh, Barrett, you know, rifle in your truck. And that would be technically be the same logic, but still something that's handy and portable and something that in my mind, how this would be utilized is say you're going truck camping, you know, you go out to a place uh, that's, you know, reasonably secluded, reasonably remote. And, um, um, especially here in Alaska, still definitely has a high bear population, but you know, you want to take friends out or you want to take family out and go camping with them. So you set up a tent that's not too far from your truck, right? Well, this is where this comes in really handy, having a proper truck gun that you can also throw in the truck with the camping gear that is, like I said, reasonably handy to have around a campsite. And so that's where something like a truck gun comes in handy. And it's something that is, like I said, going to be more powerful, going to be more effective than something like a 44 Magnum handgun or even larger calibered handguns. Um, this is going to be a lot more effective than those. So that's essentially where or the kind of um, time that I would use a truck gun and have one in the truck is, you know, if I was going out camping specifically and I wanted to have something handy that, you know, once I set up my campsite, I can throw this in the tent or, you know, have it around me for, you know, when I'm sleeping in the tent. So if I get any unwelcome visitors, they can have a nice surprise prize. So that is essentially kind of the idea and the mindset to having a truck gun. I think people should definitely have them. Uh, it's certainly handy to have, and especially in places like Alaska where there are very high bear populations, um, especially bears that are 
are used to campsites and kind of not quite domesticated but used to humans in not all the best ways so having something like this can prevent issues um, or at least stop issues from going any further so what this is specifically for those who already know this is you know probably something that's pretty evident for any of my world war ii people people who um, are aficionados of the world or of world war ii you probably understand what this is already however this is still a reasonably uncommon gun even for world war ii standards so what this is is a lee enfield number no. five jungle carbine this is not a bastardized um, number three or number four this is a legitimate number no. five true to form jungle carbine now why you guys may ask why would i want a jungle carbine for this type of application so for me Partly, I was considering several options. The jungle carbine was one of those options. It just so happened to be, you know, kind of luck that I found a jungle carbine before the other options that I was also looking for. Things like M1 Grands would have also been cool um, for this kind of application as well. But I found the jungle carbine, and what I like about the jungle carbine specifically for this um, kind of role in this task is that um, this is still a base like Lee Enfield rifle, and so what you're getting here is a 303 British firing rifle, like a rifle that's chambered in 303 British. You're getting 10 rounds of 303 British, and of course, it is in a very handy package. The jungle carbine, of course, as the name implies, it is a carbine. It's kind of hard to get all on camera because the camera is set pretty close, but you guys can see there, this is a very compact rifle, especially, especially for World War II standards. It's hard to kind of, um, you know, express this, but back in World War II, a lot of the, you know, like M1 Grands, Lee Enfield's cars, uh, or car 98s, um, Moisin Nagant's, um, a lot of those rifles were, you know, 18 to 20 inch barreled, you know, full on, like full rifles. So when this is what they mean by a carbine, this is probably a little bit large even by today's standards for a carbine, but this was a carbine by World War II standards and it is very small and very compact. And that's, like I said, part of the reason why I wanted this as a truck gun is that you're still carrying that full powered 303 British round, which is delivering, you know, around 24 to 2600 pound feet of energy at the muzzle. And so for close range, um, you know, encounters, this is going to have a lot of power and is going to be very effective. Now, like I said, the biggest disadvantage is that this is indeed a bolt action, but for what it is, you are getting a 10 round uh, box magazine on these guys. And um, with a little bit of practice, you can actually run Lee Enfields very quickly. They're designed to be ran very fast. Um, so I like the fact that they have um, a 10 round magazine capacity, which is pretty decent, especially like I said, when you're considering 303 British is a very stout round. For those who don't know 303 British, it's very equivalent to things like 30-06. Um, so once again, not like a massive, huge, powerful round. It's not gonna be like 375 H&H. &H. And so some people might say, you know, like, why didn't you get a Marlin guide gun? Why didn't you go for um, something like a bolt action in you know 375 h and h and the primary reasons why that is is that one once again uh I feel like those are de definitely decent guns, but they have a lot of recoil, and uh, even a Marlin guide gun is gonna be about the same size as this, but I like that this has much, much greater magazine capacity, and I also feel like, you know, 4570 is a decent caliber, and guide guns, um, you know, are great, but they're also definitely pretty expensive. So for something in this application, I wanted something that was a little bit more um, affordable, and typically jungle carbines are actually Actually, they tend to be more expensive, like upwards of $1,000, um, or at least, you know, like $850 plus dollars for them. So they're definitely not usually the cheapest, but I was able to score this one for a very reasonable price, like a very reasonable price. And so that was another compelling reason as to why I wanted to get it. And so it was something that I could get that was reasonably affordable and still very effective for the situation. In addition to, I also kind of wanted for a truck gun, like this is not going to be, um, you know, like, it's not always going to receive the best care. It's not always going to be the most well looked after um, type firearm. So still totally functional, but I wanted something that I wasn't afraid. Like I wanted something that was already, you know, definitely like banged up and, you know, was already used as opposed to getting some like nice, like um, Wild West Alaska, you know, guide gun that's, you know, like $3,000 that is just so beautiful. You don't even want to take it out of the freaking safe. I wanted something that was a user, something that I wouldn't be afraid.
way to what's gonna like throw in the back of the truck and if it gets a little scrape, a little ding here, you know, this isn't something that I'm gonna like cry about. Now, some people might cry because these are collectible, semi, at least semi-collectible for sure, but at the same time too, I definitely wanted something that was used user oriented something that I could you know not feel afraid about using and having around so that is why I chose this as a truck gun and I think overall this is actually a pretty decent brush gun in my opinion some people may you know think that that's wrong and when it comes to 303 British you know is it going to be the most effective round at stopping some huge you know um, Kenai grizzly bear um, Kenai brown bear or you know some like huge you know brown bear that's uh, or even grizzly bear this round is not the most effective but by no means is this a light round some people a lot of people will sit there and say you know like oh the minimum to kill a grizzly bear is a 375 H&H or you know you need burnicky you know uh, slugs black magic slugs to kill one and a lot of that comes down to circumstances there have been people as I've talked about in previous videos there have been people that have killed charging brown bears um like kodiak browns with a nine mil right so it, it certainly is contingent case by case basis and certainly once again i don't want something that's uh like super small or something that's potentially ineffective certainly the 303 british carries enough power in it to make it an effective round for uh, this type of situation and for these types of animals. Certainly black bears would not stand a chance against this round. Um, and even brown bears, grizzly bears are going to be well met by a 303 British, especially once again, this is not the type of gun that I'm necessarily going to go out hunting for bears with. I mean, you could go hunting with a 303 British Enfield, like Lee Enfields, especially after World War II, once they started hitting civilian circulation, they have, um, They've killed many deers, many bear, many moose. And so certainly a Lee Enfield is very capable at stopping them, but this isn't necessarily the type of gun that I'm gonna go hunting with. This is just a, a gun that I wanna have, like I said, for those specific use cases where it's like, okay, I'm packing up the truck to go, you know, camping on, you know, the river or, you know, go camping somewhere uh, out in the bush. Um, and we'll see it's gonna be like truck-based camping so that when I set up my campsite, I can have something at the campsite that is going to be effective at um, stopping a bear should a bear come become a problem. So that's where the kind of truck gun nature of this gun comes in. And uh, I think it's a pretty cool one too. Like I've talked about in other videos too, I think it's just a really awesome gun. I've always personally loved the Lee Enfield um, jungle carbines. I think they're really cool. They have an awesome history. They're kind of like the final form of the Lee Enfield before the world or before World War II ended. And so they did see some service. They didn't see a lot of service, um, but they're pretty cool guns overall. And I think they are just just a pretty pretty neat gun as uh, as a rule. Now these guys do have a bit of kick and a bit of bark to them because of course when you cut down a you know what's supposed to be like a 20 inch barrel down to a 16 inch barrel um, these guys have a bit of bark to them and they are no joke but uh, yeah so pretty cool gun like I said very handy very easy to hold with one hand you know use I'm not gonna say you necessarily recommend shooting one with one hand but you know a very easy gun to you know throw around and carry and that's, like I said, part of the reason why they got the name Jungle Carbine um, is because they are designed to be highly portable and uh, they prioritize um, like carryability and uh, being like overall smaller and lighter than their earlier flavors of Lee Enfield. So it still has, like I said, all the same kind of Lee Enfield styling and set up in, once again, chamber in 303 British, can hold 10 rounds in the magazines. And um, yeah, so this is pretty cool. Uh, overall, definitely pretty stoked about it. It's a cool gun. You'll definitely see it on the channel, but I figured it'd be worth going over because um, this is just an overall really cool gun. And uh, it's, I think for the purpose that I want it, personally, a pretty solid choice. So this is gonna be the truck gun and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at this Lee Enfield jungle carbine. It's pretty cool, like I said, even if you don't um, like truck guns or whatnot, just the provenance and the nature of the Lee Enfield jungle carbine is just, it's cool. These things are cool. In my opinion, they um, are one of my personal favorite um, firearms of World War II and uh, 
yeah, so I don't have too much more to say about them other than just kind of fangirling out about the jungle carbine because they are pretty cool in my opinion. And uh, this one is very similar in overall styling, if you guys couldn't tell, to the one uh, that's in the video game Battlefield 5. And not a huge video game person, especially on the channel here, but it's always cool to see something that like is uh, is. Uh, cool in, in video games that you get to have in real life. So anyways, guys, hopefully enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys got a nice look. I'll do one kind of final close up on this jungle carbine because I didn't really do any super close ups on it. So hopefully you guys uh, get to see this thing is pretty cool overall. So like I said, definitely smaller for a Lee Enfield, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool gun. And you guys will definitely be seeing it on the channel. So yeah. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.